Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace, hanging out in my house in my dining room table. It's the holiday season and so that probably means that you hopefully have a week or two off to spend with family and your kids and uh, spend some time indoors. Maybe it's snowing outside where you are. Hopefully you're nice and cozy and safe in your home. Well, I have a project that is perfect for this exact time of year. You can do this by yourself, you can do this with your kids, you can do this with your spouse, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whoever. It's just a fun thing to do. And so you're gonna need a few things to make these portraits. So let me show you the basics. First is you need a camera. So you don't need a fancy camera or anything. In fact, I'm gonna use this camera. This is my Fujifilm X-Pro1. I got this camera 10 years ago. It is not the latest and greatest camera at all, but what it does have is it has a macro function and that is key. You need to have either a lens that's a macro lens or you need to have a camera that has a macro function. So that is something that's an absolute must. My Fujifilm X-Pro1 with my 35 millimeter lens is perfect for this. So that's what I have as far as the camera goes. The next thing we need to have is this plate of glass, this sheet of glass. So I just went to a local home supply store and I got this and cleaned it up really good. It cost me about four, I think four or five bucks for that piece of glass. If you don't happen to have a home supply store down the road, you can just look and see if you have a picture frame on your wall, take the glass out of that. It needs to be glass though. So uh, if you don't have, if you're trying to do this with that sort of uh, see-through plastic, it's probably not gonna work so good. Make sure you have a sheet of glass that's flat of some sort. You also need some boxes, some of any kind. It could be anything. It could be cups, boxes, anything. Just something to put the glass on. And so I happen to have two identical boxes for some cameras that I bought earlier this year. You also need to have a flash, an off-camera flash. I'm gonna use my Ellen Chrome One for this with just a normal reflector. You can use a speed light. You can use pretty much any off-camera flash for this. The Ellen Chrome One, I just love it, so that's what I'm going to be using. The other thing that you need is a tripod. You have to have a tripod for your camera because we're gonna be positioning things really specifically. So make sure you have some kind of tripod that you can get the camera over the top of the glass. You'll see that in a second. And then most important, the secret weapons, these two bottles. This guy right here is a bottle of Rain X. You can get this at any auto supply store. This is for squirting on your window to keep the uh, rain from uh, sticking to the window basically. So it makes it beat up and so the windshield wipers can work really good. So get some Rain X. We're gonna be putting that on the glass. And then you just need some water in a squirty jar. And so this will just spray out and well, you'll see what happens in a second. And then the last thing you need, you need something that's colorful. So I've got some oranges here. I've got this mug that my girlfriend made me. So it's really colorful. I've got some apples, all scrounge around the house and get some other things. You just need some color. And so anything will do. Anything that has color is gonna work for this experiment. Okay, now that we have all our stuff, it's time to set it up and then start shooting. Step one, Take your two boxes, put them to the side, get your plate of glass centered so you can stick stuff underneath it like this. The next thing you're gonna to want to do is set up your flash. And so I've got my flash here, I've just got a little stand. And what I'll do is I'm just gonna put this over here sort of like this, where it's pretty darn close. And um, I'm putting it at this angle sort of behind here. I'll have the camera on a tripod above this shooting down like this something like that. But you wanna have the flash at this angle because of something called the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection. So you want the, the, the glare of that to be bouncing off boom, and going that way. If you put it too high, the glare is gonna come right back into the lens of your camera and so it's gonna look wonky. If you see you're getting lots of glare from the flash itself, then try to put it down maybe uh, a little bit lower to the side. Do whatever you need to do to get this down so it's still getting the stuff underneath but sort of bouncing off of this and it's flying that way. So I've got my flash set up. Let me get my tripod set and then we'll start doing all the funky stuff with the Rain X. I need to get my camera directly over this glass. And so to do that, I've just put these two front legs sort of out and on the boxes and the third leg, um, I've just sort of made this go at an angle. And so then I can get this uh, camera right directly over this. I can use the center column to sort of raise and lower this to get it exactly where I want it to be. I want it as close as possible where it still focuses. Okay, now that we have this set up, I'm gonna take the camera off the tripod just for a second. We need to prepare this glass. 
And so to do that, what you'll do is you'll take your rain X and then you squirt some on a rag and then you need to uh, coat the glass with that. So you just follow the instructions on the rain X. Okay, now that that is on there, we're gonna let that dry just for a little bit. And then take your water and just sort of lightly just spray that on there just a little bit. You want that to be a fine mist. You can play with how much water to put on there, but you'll see as you're spraying more or less on there that the bubbles become more or less pronounced. And so uh, once you do that, you can just turn on your flash. I might need to raise this up just a little bit so it's not hitting my tripod. There we go. And then I'm going to put my transmitter. So I have my Ellen Chrome transmitter that will work right here at my Fuji X Pro One. I'll stick this on the tripod itself. All right, let's talk about the camera and the settings and how I have this set. So I have my camera set to manual mode, ISO 200, that's the lowest the ISO this camera will go to. I have it set at 125th of a second for the shutter speed and the aperture value is 22. It's a very, very small aperture value. And the reason for that is because we're shooting macro mode, I want all the little beads of water to be in focus as well as the stuff that they're reflecting underneath here. And so uh, to make sure I have enough light, I'm using this uh, flash and it's almost at full power. So you can meter the light um, just underneath that to see if, if it's at F22 if you have a light meter. Or what you can do is you can just take a few test shots and adjust the flash power up or down until your histogram shows you that the exposure is correct. So I've already done that. So ISO 200, 125th of a second, F22. Um, I am in manual focus. And so I'm looking through here. I'm on macro mode and I am making sure I'm crystal clear in focus. And now that I am, the fun starts. So I'll just put something underneath here that looks cool. I'll take a shot. It <laughs> looks really groovy. I'll move this around a little bit. I'll take another shot. That looks cool. I'll try this maybe with the rain -X stuff. This looks pretty groovy as well. I'll take that shot. I'll try my uh, fun mug underneath here. So I'm just going to put that. I'm just going to hand hold it. Take a shot. I'll take some of these shots. And this is how it goes. So once you have things sort of figured out, you just play with the stuff underneath and shoot, 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 shoot. Now the other thing that you can do is you can change your aperture value from f22 to something that's much wider like f2.8, f4, something like that, and you'll see the stuff underneath sort of go out of focus and you'll get this really interesting bokeh. And so we're going to do that next. So what I did now is I changed my aperture value in my camera to f4. I changed my power of my light all the way down as low as it will go. And then I did a couple test shots to make sure the exposure is correct. And now I'm getting a totally different look. And so now we can really see those uh, bubbles. They look really cool. And the, the stuff underneath is now just adding, whoa, it's just adding color to it. I don't know, I think I sort of like this better. Let me try this mug again here. It's got some blue in it. Try that, oh, that looks so cool. The fun of this, oh, it's just so much fun. The fun of this is that you can play. You can just play and try to make anything you want. The other thing you can do is you can squirt a little bit more water on there. Instead of making it a fine mist, you can make larger bubbles. If you don't like that, you can wipe them off. You can do the fine mist, get really, really small bubbles. You can do all kinds of different things. The point of this is to play and experiment and have fun and create some art that is great for you and your family. Then what you'll want to do is take these photos, throw them into your favorite photo editor. It could be iPhoto, Lightroom, it could be Aperture, it could be anything that you happen to have around. And what you want to do is you want to increase the contrast, increase the saturation, maybe move the black point so everything is really poppy and sharpen them up. And what you're going to get are photos that look like this.
Well, thanks for joining me for this episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell so you get notifications of all the great stuff that's coming to you every single day right here on Adorama TV. If you have questions or comments, well, put them in the comments below. We'd love to hear what you have to say. And as always, check out the links in the description of this video for more information and information about some of the products that are used in this video. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you again next time.